in this video we'll talk about the snare complex and vesicle fusion so the vesicle fusion would be discussed in detail so stay tuned till the end so the snare complex is crucial for fusion of vesicles question is how does snare complex help in the vesicle fusion process so here we are looking at the target membrane and a particular vesicle so from the particular vesicle there would be snares known as vesicle bound snares or v snares and at the target membrane there would be t snares which interact with each other also there are other components that help in this fusion process and targeting process there are certain gtp bound small g protein molecules known as rab that help in tethering docking and sorting of specific vesicle towards a particular membrane so there are specific receptors known as rab effectors that are present on the target membrane thereby rab and rab effectors are like molecular matchmakers it determines the specificity of vesicle fusion to a particular membrane now let us look at the nitty gritty of the vesicle fusion by taking the example of the synaptic vesicles so we know that in the synapses the neurotransmitter containing vesicle should fuse with the presynaptic membrane such that the content that means the neurotransmitter could be released into the synaptic cleft so now we are zooming into the synapse and here is the pre and the post synapse here is the neurotransmitter containing uh, vesicle now what happens is there are specific snare interactions that triggers the vesicle fusion so first of all these particular vesicles would have gtp bound rab so rab gtp is helping in the docking process and it makes sure that these vesicle binds to the presynaptic membrane and not in a random part of the membrane so rab effectors and the rab interactions are really important in context of that so this is the vesicle docking event eventually the snares which are present in the synaptic vesicles which are v snares also known as vamp in in context of synapse they are known as vamps and the t snares in context of synapse which are known as snap 25 and syntaxin would interact with each other to form the snare complex eventually a tight snare would be formed so initially a loose snare and eventually a tight snare is formed and in this overall snare formation calcium ions also help so now you can see the tight snare complex has formed and it drags the membrane of the particular vesicle and the presynaptic membrane so close to each other that they can fuse with each other now in this particular <coughs> orientation there are two snap 25 one syntaxin and one vamp in, in per snare complex now they bring the membrane so close that the membrane can eventually fuse and release the content of the vesicle to the presynaptic cleft so this is how the synaptic vesicle fusion takes place now what happens is there are these uh, uh, the, these snare complexes which are now entangled with each other that has to be released with the help of specific molecules which are known as nsf and alpha snap they hydrolyze atp and free up these entangled snare from each other now these snares are ready for a new round of vesicle tethering so this entire process of vesicle tethering to the presynaptic membrane is very much comparable to a ship docking towards a, a, a ship trying to dock towards a harbor so in order to dock it has to throw an anchor which would bind to some location in the harbor and th thereby it would be pulled towards the harbor right and same things are true in context of synaptic vesicles the v snares are actually these anchors which is pulled by the t snare t snare and v snare is exactly mimicking these kind of actions now all these uh, all these ideas about snare which helps in membrane fusion comes from many in vitro assays and in vivo assays in in vitro assays where there are liposomes expressing vamp and another type of liposome expressing snap 25 are mixed together they lead to membrane fusion they lead, lead, uh, lead to fu fused vesic vesicles this is how people had an idea that these snare complexes can actually uh, help in membrane fusion so one of the idea came from a east screen done by randy shekman and the group so this was the nobel winning work where several secretory deficient mutant were discovered in east 
and class E type mutant was one type of mutant where there are accumulation of proteins in the secretory vesicle. So there are proteins which are already bound in the secretory vesicles but these secretory vesicles cannot fuse to the membrane and cannot release the protein. So in this class SEC4 mutant was discovered which was nothing but the Rab protein uh, for in context of yeast. So obviously one can understand Rab protein, SNAPs, all of these are really important in context of vesicle fusion. Now the question is the specificity of vesicle fusion. So which vesicle would fuse to which membrane? That is another important thing because there are thousands and thousands of vesicles inside the cell trafficked here and there. So how does the specificity of fusion uh, takes place? It's via Rabs. Specific type of vesicle would have specific types of RAB. For example, the vesicle which is uh, bound for delivery from endoplasmic reticulum to the cis Golgi has RAB1 as a vesicle sorter. Whereas the endo, early endosome would have RAB5. So this heterogeneity in RAB leads to the membrane selectivity. And it turns out there are different kinds of RAB responsible for fusion of different types of vesicles throughout the cell. And this is a quick summary of that. But overall, we looked at how the vesicle fusion happens and how snare complexes take active role in that. So I hope this was useful. If you like this video, give it a quick thumbs up. Don't forget to like, share and subscribe. You can get more notes and flashcards in our Facebook page and our Instagram page. Support our channel using super thanks. Your small contribution is our big motivation. See you in next video.